Hi guys, it is April from Getting Hugo With It. I am so excited to do this video. We are going to be talking about the 19 books that I really, really want to read in 2019. Now these, most of these books are books that have been staring at me from my shelves like, really, you still haven't read me? Really? And you call yourself a reader? These books are judgmental that way <laughs> in my mind and maybe I'm really judging myself for not having read these books yet so I I am really going to emphasize reading these obviously I think I'm gonna put them on a different shelf on my bookcase somewhere um, I'm not sure where yet but I want to have like a prioritize these books bookshelf um, just like I do for my arcs I have uh, a couple of bookshelves for my arcs where it's like okay you really need to get to these April so I'm so excited okay enough jibber jabbering let's get into it that I am going to read in 2019 is finally The Secret History. Now I have had The Secret History on my shelves for years uh, and I have wanted to read it so badly that I have ended up with two copies of it on my shelves in the past. Uh, I think I'm supposed to read this. I have also never read Donna Tartt. I think this is her favorite. Like I think most people have adored the secret history um, in a way that you know there's been a lot of mixed reviews about things like the goldfinch so I'm prioritizing this and this is about a group of college kids they are going to college in New England um, and there is a murder now this is not a who done it apparently but a why done it so you go through this group of friends and get to know each and every one of them and find out why one of them was murdered I'm so excited it's gonna be good it's gonna be so good so yes the secret history is going down I'm also finally going to read the Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver. Now I've never also read uh, Barbara Kingsolver and she's meant to be a brilliant, brilliant writer. Now this book um, follows a, a father who brings his family to uh, the Congo in 1959. He is an evangelical Baptist and I think he's there to like spread the word of God. I, I believe that's the reason that he goes there. And it's about their lives in that time. We follow three decades in post-colonial Africa. And it sounds really good. I've heard wonderful things about the Poisonwood Bible. It's almost like a modern classic. I would, I would consider this a modern classic. And for that reason, I need to read that. One book that has been Oh my gosh, circulating booktube for so long um, and has had so many people speak so highly of it. Um, I desperately want to read Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. This is about a girl who becomes pregnant and she is alone and she actually um, ends up marrying this older man and he is moving from Korea to Japan. So it is about her experience moving from Korea to Japan and her experience in Japan because apparently that was not always easy. There was a lot of prejudice um, towards Korean people in Japan and I am so here for this book. I've been wanting to read it forever. Yes, I've got some big chunky books on this list and it's not getting any shorter. The Power of One by Bruce Courtney. I finally found a more lovely copy of it. I had another copy of this but it was like it was hardcover and like ripping apart. It was not looking its best and so when I found this I immediately picked it up. So The Power of One follows a little boy in South Africa um, his name is PK and it's 1939 and Hitler is, um, you know, 
kind of taking over the world at this point. It's really starting to ramp up and it's about his childhood and I remember watching the movie version of this many years ago and it impacted me then. I don't remember it to the point that I couldn't there would be no point of picking this up. I remember my mom loving this book and loving that movie and she has very good taste and so I've always wanted to read The Power of One. It's going to happen. So huge book so far. Okay, here's a shorter one. You guys have seen this in so many TBRs. I, I don't even know how many TBRs. It would probably be good to go back and count. I'm sorry. I'm finally going to read Intensity by Dean Koontz. This is, I would probably classify it as horror. Some people classify it as thriller. But it follows a young girl who's sleeping over at a friend's house. And a madman comes in, kills everyone in the house except for her. No, for her. He takes her and brings her, I don't know where. He brings her to his home or somewhere to keep her and she is locked up um, and she is starting to hear information from him about who his next victim is going to be. I think somehow she is able to get away and she is the only person who can really help to stop him from um, abducting and probably hurting another victim. So it sounds really great and I've wanted to read it forever so it's it's going down in 2019 I tell you. Uh, another book that has been all over booktube, it was really big in 2017, uh, was The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. I really really want to read this. I mean this was Simon from Savage Reads, his favorite book of 2017. And ever since then, I have wanted to read this. This is a historical fiction book, I believe. Yes, 1893 in London. We follow Cora. She is widowed and she moves her and her son to the countryside. And apparently there is some sort of monster there. I don't really know much more about it than that. It sounds a little bit gothic, a little bit sci-fi, uh, and a little bit historical fiction. And that sounds good to me. Um, I just heard such good things that I really should have read this by now and it's been looking at me like, everyone loves me, please just, you know, get your act together April and read me. So I'm going to. Okay, moving on, In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. This is like the grandfather of true crime, right? The, the grandfather? Can books be relatives? I don't know, but it is so well loved. This follows Truman Capote um, as he is investigating a, a shocking crime that happened in 1959. Um, it follows uh, a very small tone. It's Holcomb Kansas and four members of the Clutter family were shot uh, very close to the faces. Um, they, I think they were around a dinner table and each and every one of them were, were shot. And you're finding out what happened, what the small town thinks. Um, this is a look at a small town um, when it's very much devastated and the, the gossip within small towns and I cannot wait to read his voice because he, Truman Capote, was himself such a big character that I, I really want to read this. So that's, that's going to go down this year because it's about time. Um, lots of authors on this list that I've never read, um, which is a whole other video that I'm planning on doing about authors that I haven't read yet that I have like many of them I have multiple copies of their books on my shelves and I should probably like prioritize them so that I know if I should be continuing to book, pick them up or not. So um, that's a whole other um, video. But another author that I have never read that everyone seems to love or many people seem to love is uh, Jodi Picoult's The Storyteller. Uh, people have recommended this book to me for a long time now. Jodi Bacol is 
meant to be a master at taking a topic that's very controversial, um, where you might have very detailed and poignant and very um, determined um, opinions on and she makes you kind of open up to the other side. So this is about a young girl and a an older man who um, is elderly and she finds out um, that this elderly man who has always been kind to her, I think he's a neighbor, um, she finds out that he was actually a Nazi. And what do you do with the fact that someone has been kind to you all your life? You actually have a Jewish heritage in your family and you have this elderly man who, do, who you've always loved, who you find out has been a Nazi. Uh, it sounds really great. And this is where I want to start with Jodi Picoult. There have been so many times that I have been looking through used bookstores and I've seen many Jodi Picoults, but I'm really not sure if she is going to be from me. So I want to find out, is she from me or not? This will be the year that I find out. Uh, another book that's actually on my winter TBR is A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tolls. This just screams winter to me for some reason. This takes place in Russia. Uh, during, it's 1922 and we follow a account and he is sentenced to stay in this hotel for years and years and years and so you are following him in this hotel and he is watching the Russian Revolution happening from his balcony this is this is his life and it is about the people who live and work at the hotel and his relationships with them it just sounds brilliant I have not read Amor Tolls yet it's gonna happen it's gonna happen this winter it's gonna happen sooner than later Another book that has been such a beloved book uh, is The Kite Runner by Khalid Hosseini. Now I read um, his book Sea Prayer, which was like a very tiny little picture book, which I read in the span of like maybe 10 minutes and just cried and cried and cried and I know that I'm gonna cry and cry and cry with this as well. Um, this follows uh, I think two little boys in Afghanistan and it's about their love for each other and the political tension. Um, I think just before or as um, Russia is invading um, it sounds really good. I, I'm ready for a good cry and I think this will provide for sure. Okay, so we're getting into a classic here that I, I can't believe I haven't read yet. I love John Steinbeck and I should really read East of Eden. This is huge. I'm super scared of it. This is like the heaviest book I've picked up so far. This is, oh, you know what? I keep thinking it's much bigger than it is. I think it's it's under, no, it's exactly 601 pages. So I, when you pick up this book, it feels like it's 800 or 900 pages. It's only 601 April. It's going to be okay. In this book, we're following a family. Um, what is the family's name? Oh, I have no idea what the family's name is. Oh, the Trasks and the Hamiltons. We follow two families and their relationships with one another. I don't actually know very much about this. I know it's the classic. I know everyone who has read it seems to have loved it and I want to love it too. So that's going down. It's going down. Okay, this next one, it's not one of those books that have been on my shelves like demanding for me to have read them, but every single day I go home at lunch and I watch Trevor Noah on the TV. I watch The Daily Show. I love him. Trevor Noah is like this brilliant, fabulously dimpled man that I just adore. And so every day I have this daily reminder, why haven't you read his book yet? I feel like I will love him even more after reading Born a Crime. So um, this is about the story of Trevor Noah's life. It's true. It's um, nonfiction, I should say. 
and it, it it's the story of his childhood in particular. He was born to a black mother and a white father. They were madly in love, uh, but this was absolutely and positively a crime at this time. He was an interracial child and his parents had to be incredibly careful, very, very careful um, with him and how they, you know, um, pose themselves in public. And he, he had a very fascinating uh, childhood and I really want to deep dive in to find out what that was like. Apparently the audiobook is amazing. I don't have Audible. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to listen to it on audiobook, sadly, but either way, I want to read his book and know him better. The Shadow of the Wind. I, how have I not read this? This is about a little boy whose father tells him they go to a bookstore and he says, you can pick any book that you want. And so he goes. Uh, and picks a book called The Shadow of the Wind. He falls in love with it. This is, by the way, 1945 Barcelona. He falls in love with it. And he's like, well, I want to read more by this author. And this author has written plenty more. However, someone or some regime or I don't know what is systematically going and destroying all of this author's books. And our main character, Daniel, wants to find out why. So it's a bit of a mystery. I'm so here for this book. It's a book about books. It is a book about books. What is there not to love about this? So I'm going to be reading that. Another book that I, I just found out this is coming out as a movie this year with Kira Knightley. It's World War II, The Aftermath by Riddy and Brooke. This is about a British officer and his wife. It's like post um, World War II, but just, just post World War II. Uh, the British are still in Germany at this point. Many of the British have kind of taken over German houses. So if you were a Nazi officer or a commander or wherever you were on the, on the chain of, um, power in the Nazi regime, the British would go in and take over these people's homes. But our main character, uh, Colonel Lewis Morgan, decides instead of kicking them out, why don't we just all live together? And it is about the tension that must exist within that. I'm assuming there's a lot of tension. There really would be. You just ended the war with these people. You know, you're finding out the horrors that have really happened in Germany there must be so much tension. I also wonder if there will be a little bit of humanity in here as well. Um, I don't, I don't know. I'm so excited. It's coming out as a movie in 2019. So that is going down. Another one that I've talked about so many times. Here's a book that Russell from Ink and Paper blog talked about in one of his book, uh, one of his videos a while back and he 100% sold it to me. This is The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay uh, by Michael Chabon, Chabon? I don't know how to say his last name. Uh, this is a World War II book as well, a couple World War II on here. This follows uh, two cousins who live in New York City. One of them has lived in New York City for several years. One of them has just arrived in New York City. Um, this is well, within World War II, he is Jewish and he somehow smuggled himself out of Nazi invaded Prague. And they decide together to create, I think, a comic book, um, which ties to the war in some way and talks about their fears. And I've just heard wonderful things. This is the winner of the Pulitzer Prize. And I've got a thing about the Pulitzer Prize that I like to read those books for some reason, even though most of them intimidate me. I, I really want to read them all. So uh, Russell just went on and on about this book and I, I want to read this. This, okay, this, if I thought East of Eden was heavy, this one is heavy. The Pillars of the Earth by Kenneth, Ken, Kenneth, Kenneth Follett, Ken Follett. 
Uh, this is about the making of a cathedral. I, I promise, I'm going to promise myself after I finished reading this, I'm going to describe this book as something other than the building of a cathedral and the family that builds this cathedral because it's the most boring thing in the world. I, I know that there's plenty more in here. Um, and I want to be able to describe this better because anytime anyone talks about this book, they all say it's the building of a cathedral, but it's so much more. And I'm like, but what more? Tell me the more part. So I'm going to find out. But right now, all I know is it's about a family that builds a cathedral, but it's like way better than that. That one's huge. I'm so afraid of big books. Like 2018, one of my goals was not to read large books because I'm so afraid of them. I'm, I'm really avoiding that now and I'm just reading the books that are calling to me. So another one that has been calling to me is a man called Uwe. How many times has this one been on a TBR that you've seen? But I will read it. This is about a very grumpy old man uh, named Uwe and a some neighbors move in and they transform him, I think. I think they make his heart open in this lovely way. And I've never read a Frederick Bachman and I'd like to know if I'm going to love him or not. And if I love him, then I can like totally go and buy all of his other books because he's such a popular author. So a man called Uwe. Okay, this one I already feel mixed about. It's Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. This has had so much hate, but I bought it a while back. And every Christmas or so, usually every Christmas, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I have to read that. This is a good time to read that. Um, so that's the plan. I'm also going to give myself full permission to DNF it if I'm not enjoying it. What did you think of this book? I'm I'm almost afraid to know. Like I want to know, but I I'm almost afraid to know. The last book is nonfiction, and it is Quiet: The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking. I'm an introvert. I I get very overwhelmed. I think I'm also highly sensitive. I get very easily overwhelmed, and um, I want to understand myself better and understand why that is and know how to explain myself to people in my life that are extroverts. Um, I'm so jealous of extroverts because it seems like 10 million things can be happening around them and they're just okay with it. And I feel panic um, and like there's this like voice in my head that's just saying, retreat, retreat. <laughs> and I wanna know why that is um, and how I can like work in a very extroverted world, um, not just work like at my job, but just work and move through the world as an introvert in an extroverted world. So I, this is the book that I want to read to truly understand myself a little bit better. So that those are the 19 guys. I am so happy. I'm so happy that I'm going to get to these. Um, I know that there are several other books on my shelves that are also calling to me, but these are the ones that are, are calling at me in a judgmental way. So I want to like quell their um, criticism. And I would love to know in the comments below, have you read any of these books? Um, what did you think of them? I'm really hoping that a lot of you have enjoyed those books. Um, and do you guys have any books on your shelves that are also like judging you? Like, are you serious that you haven't read me yet? I'd love to know what that book is for you or books. Um, I love chatting with you guys in the comments below. So let's chat and I will see you next time. Okay, bye.